1957. He received a National Diploma in Sculpture, five years course from Government College of Fine Arts in 1980, a BFA in Sculpture from the College of Fine Arts in Trivandrum in 1982, and a Master's in Fine Art with specialization in Sculpture from MSU in Baroda in 1984. He also completed his Master's in Sculpture with distinction from the Royal College of Art in London, that was in 1989. Rimzin has participated widely in museum and institutional shows, like the one you're seeing of Reggie's show there. Um, his select participations include Pond Near the Field, which was exhibited here, and at KNMA, curated by Rubaina Karod. And uh, I'm going to skip through, there's a very long list of shows across the world. His solo shows, the most recent ones, The Round Ocean and The Living Death, he'll be taking us through in his slide presentation now, in 2020. Forest of the Living Divine, Talwar Gallery, New York, 2016. Sculptures and Drawings at the Guild, Mumbai, 2008. And these are all list, his solo shows that have taken place. And his recent participation was in a group show, Past, Present and Continuous. 25 years of the Guild Art Gallery at the Bikaner House in New Delhi in 2022. The Guild Gallery is also with us in presenting this show and this talk to you all today. KP Reggie's show, The Good Earth, that you all just went through, and the talk today by Rimzin. Rimzin has taught and held positions at various institutions. He was the principal at the College of Fine Arts in Trivandrum in 2011 to 2014 and principal at the Raja Ravi Varma College of Fine Arts in Mahavelikara in 2007. These are both important institutions in the Kerala um, education for the arts scene. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pass the mic over to Rimzan, sir, um, and he's going to take us through his work. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Aditi, for your big introduction. Uh, in the beginning, uh, the organizers asked me to talk about my, you know, art practices and how I'm doing things like that. Then I thought, uh, I mean, I lost actually in what to say. I mean, I don't know because I have very wide range of things and I, I was doing so. But then I, you know, started recollecting things and. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, for me, is the, the studio is a very uh, central stage, important place, because studio means where I am doing my work. It is very central to my art. Because uh, I, I used to, uh, you know, collect a lot of uh, objects, you know, when we are you know, walking around the street or in market or, you know, wherever you go. So all these, uh, you know, objects and, you know, materials I collect, because I, I always I thought that uh, these objects and materials, it's not uh, neutral and for me, because it's, it's, it's also uh, associated with uh, human life and uh, it leaves a lot of marks and, you know, memories and histories associated with that. So uh, to evoking that, that kind of uh, thing, uh, that will be something different, actually. I mean, I, I felt uh, that is very central to my practice. And then the simultaneously, I, I do a lot of uh, doodles in order to digging up you know, images from my deep inside, I mean, psychic world. It's not very conscious uh, act, but it's, it's very random things. I. I do, and then uh, get back to that images, and then sometimes I feel something is, you know, interesting. You know, some shapes, or some round shapes, or something. Uh, so then built upon that, I mean, you know, then consciously building upon these images, and then you know, putting these uh, objects and uh, you know the materials also in connecting with the these uh, you know images. Then uh, slowly, you know, 
other were images which you know evolve in it so it's a long process i mean continuously you know working so sometimes it takes long period of time to uh, come up with a, a something a solid image and sometimes very quickly you come across with an image something like that so i am showing my studio and where i am working my thing this is where uh, my studio this is my studio this actually it was uh, earlier it was a, it was a it was a bread company bread factory actually bread and biscuit and all of this so they stop producing it and then i got to work, work in this place so this is what i am talking about you know, the kind of doodles and all the sketches you know quick sketches sort of things <coughs> So there is nothing definite, but uh, you know, you just uh, scribbling something, you know, keep on doing it. I mean, there are so many uh, this kind of things, but you cannot actually, you know, transform into a sculpture or anything. But it is process. Uh. So this is a kind of a finished work. I mean, but I am, you know, doing the kind of drawing or painting or, you know, you can call it whatever it is. Sort of. This is a charcoal on paper. <coughs> These are uh, acrylic on, you know, paper, you know, the Sorry? Ah, uh, you always this, uh, ah, yeah, you have seen that, uh, you noticed that, but the thing is, that is what I was saying, you know, when you do the doodles and things, so, I mean, it is, it is uh, I don't know. <laughs> It happened to, you know, I mean, it come out something like that, you know, the oval shapes and things like that. Right? But then I, you know, uh, you know, reflecting on that, you know, what it, what, ca what it can be or something like that. So it's like uh, uh, my works, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, there, is a, there is a connection with the, the earth and the sky. So there is a, uh, I feel, I, I, I felt that, you know, it, there is something uh, a reference to the, the cosmic presence, something like that. So it keeps coming into my work and, you know, it's in three-dimensional as well as in painting, you know. This is school, actually, you know, school at, you know, my Then again, uh, the images are like a school and some of the building and buildings and uh, the small huts and all. It's associated with uh, people and, uh, you know, certain histories also uh, we can, you know, uh, uh, connected with, uh, you know, uh, because schools are, you know, very uh, important place. Uh, you know, schools play an important place to liberate people, you know. To, through education, you know. So the history of school is very much part of the history of Kerala. I mean, so it was there. I mean, so schools are such important thing. The house of Guru. House of Guru. Guru, teacher.
to the similar kinds of uh, you know images coming into the three dimensional world so i did uh, you know the, the you know I, i was talking about the doody the same way i make uh, small small when uh, maquettes or an uh, idea for sculpture so this is one of that kind of thing very small you know clay thing just get an idea of how the space is going to look and <coughs> yeah, now you can you know, see the sculpture and you know, how Structure is evolving from the you know, going. So again, these are some of the recent work. I mean, recent means a couple of months ago. I just started. Yeah, that's on paper. Yeah, on paper. These are very small things, you know, not very big. <laughs> no, but the colors are very important, actually. Yeah, color, when you do so, um, you know the red is very important down for me a red and the the kind of it is actually green uh, olive green actually so then uh, when it is come into slide and uh, you know projecting that color you won't get it actually you know so uh, yeah for instance uh, this uh, is like kalamerith uh, anoli if you look at kalamerith uh, they are using the kind of uh, green the uh, dark i mean the black and you know white powder and all and no? so those are you know some resonation you know with the my way of seeing things you know so it's like that. yeah i mean it, there you can see that you know this square kind of architectural thing and then the round and oval shape i mean the, on the top and so there some kind of relationship so then when i look back into my drawings i i find that there is some connection but i frankly tell you that i am not consciously uh, doing it but you know it it comes in my work that's all that. so the the green part is something like that you know a uh, blue blue part is yeah so oh, sorry <laughs> this not green
Because it's, uh, you know, there is a connection between earth and the sky, you know. So once it is being connected, then the other, you know, relationship can be, you know, revealed. You know. So that is it. These are uh, two feet. Height and two feet and something like that. Can you? Open the, the, uh, the selected work. So we are on uh, the live on YouTube. So if anyone has questions, you can do. You can ask for the mail. We can have a conversation. But asking for the mic so that we can, everyone can hear your question. Sorry, uh, so now I'm talking about my earlier art practices. So these works are uh, actually, uh, I had done in the mid, uh, early in the 80s. 80s means 1980s. No? So I started my you know, art education in the second part of 70s. No? So, 75, something like that. So then uh, this works, uh, this, this work is titled uh, The Three Heads on a Shelf. This, uh, um, this uh, I did when I was studying at the MS University of Baroda. So I was doing my uh, PG there. So I was doing this work there. So in 84, actually, it's correct, you know. So, <coughs> when I was studying there, uh, uh, one of my, some of my, uh, you know, colleagues, I mean, the students who are specializing in portraiture, you know, portraiture sculpture, you know. So every year uh, they uh, do a lot of uh, portraiture and 15, more than 15 uh, portraiture, they do a very realistic kind of work. Then when they, uh, you know, complete, completing their course, they just throw it away, these portraits. So it's a hollow and very lightweight, uh, cast in the plaster of Paris, you know. So this was lying there, you know, so many it was lying there, you know. So the beginning, uh, I picked up this uh, throwaway project, uh, portraits, and then remodeled it. I mean, I was working on top of it. Uh, and then hang on the wall because so it it gives uh, you, uh, when something you know a soul thing is hanging on the wall so there there is a tension of uh, you know gravity you know so the, so you, you get that kind of a feeling actually then the plank is also there you know it's quite large work on the wall you know it's very colorful I mean highly painted at that time. This is another work of mine. It, it is titled Departure. This is also in the uh, 84, uh, no, 83, 84, at that, that time I, I did this work. This, is, uh, this work is titled uh, Man in Chalk Circle. Man in Chalk Circle. Chalk Circle. It's a, uh, chalk circle is around it. It's a life-size figure you know, in fiberglass. 
now it is in the ngma national gallery of modern art uh, these are all together i mean in the same year i, I did this this work and then uh, there was a show curated by vivan sundaram at the you know on behalf of uh, kasholi art center in the devendra bhavan new delhi you know so i was one of the six sculptors of that seven sculptors This is again in 86 I did. Uh, thousand stories on a cloth bundle is the title of that work. And uh, in 80 uh, Eighty-seven, I know. Eighty, end of eighty-six, eighty-seven. I, I got this uh, Inlax Foundation uh, scholarship, and I got an opportunity to study at the Royal College of Art London. You know. So I did this work there. You know. This. It's quite large work. I mean, it's not very small. In fact, this uh, I, I took almost a, a year to complete it. I mean, it's. there are so many transformations i mean not the you know, the first uh, the first attempt to complete it you know so it's it's go on for a long period to complete it this is from my degree show there you know from the royal college of art so the degree show was in 8, 80 uh, 80 89 1989 so this is from the degree show you know studied uh, i mean i did my bfa i mean and the national diploma and all uh, during the late 70s uh, i was one of the first uh, i was one of this the student i mean who was in the first batch of that you know classes there in the college of fine arts to and then the the, the issue was that uh, the college was just started and then we don't have much facilities there and particularly the you know, library was very poor there is hardly any library i mean books there in the library so only thing we got was that a bundle of uh, studio studio international magazines from the british council new uh, library so they just, they just uh, gifted these uh, magazines to the college so we students used to go through these uh, you know magazines i mean the studio international magazines so the studio international magazines actually cover you know articles and you know, uh, things from the 50s to 70s 20 years of that so all this western you know avant-garde art was there so the thing only thing was that uh, we couldn't actually read the theoretical writings in it we have seen it and somehow we got an our own way of understanding the things you know not maybe not the and another thing i realized that uh, whatever you know you see in the international journals or even if you travel to europe or america and you know, see the works uh, 
somebody has to translate it in, in our context, actually. Uh, generally, we understand it. Okay? Understand it and uh, we can pick up from there. There is uh, an, an internalization and uh, that process is very important. For instance, when you, when you see the binale there, you just go and see it, but only you, you, won't, uh, you won't actually be able to get into it, actually. You, know? you have to, to translate it into our own terms. Uh, in the cloth bundle and all, I am trying to uh, translate it, I mean, to understand it, it uh, in my own terms, actually. My own terms in the sense, it is my own cultural background, my own, you know, uh, way of uh, seeing things. That's the way I, 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 I respond to it. This is not the way, actually, Western artists do it, actually. That is the differences are there. That is a, that is a real difference, actually. Students, you can explain how that. Yeah. What is that difference? Yeah, later, yeah. Yeah? After the course, yeah. Okay. I'll do it. Okay. okay. This is titled uh, Story Story Told by a Rat. Okay, that uh, boy is listening, actually, you know, something. You know. Intensely listening something. Yeah. This again, uh, this torso, it was a plaster cast of a Venus of something. You know, because in the Royal College of Art, the sculpture department is very close to the Victoria Arbus Museum there. So, uh, so they used to, you know, uh, uh, throw away all their uh, you know, display devices and things and uh, after come finishing their show and then they just throw it away. You know? so there is a skit near to that uh, department. You know? We students used to collect this, you know, uh, throw away things, you know, objects and things. So I collected this, uh, you know, torso of the Venus and then passed on that. That is the reason the uh, arm is, you know, just put forward in you know, something like that. This is again uh, one of my sort of, uh, you know, slips in my work, I mean, at one point, because it, this I did in in 1990, actually, when I returned from uh, London, I started my, uh, I mean, I was working in Delhi, and uh, I have a small studio there, you know, I rented out, and uh, I was working there in the early 90s. Uh, so, the, one of the things interest me was that, uh, you know, I was uh, usually, you know, I used to visit the National Museum in Delhi. So I have seen a lot of uh, Indian sculptures. Even in Britain, I mean, London, I used to go go to the, uh, the British Museum, Holborn, and there also I, I, I try to understand what, what the Indian sculpture, traditional Indian sculptures are. You know. I do a lot of sketches also from there. You know. So one thing interests me is that uh, uh, this uh, one idea of uh, taking the breath inside the sculpture, you know, sort of. You know. So it's something like uh, you blow on a balloon or something. You know? So the surface is smooth and uh, there is some, uh, you know, energy, you know, inside the body and then, then you know, that is coming out. I mean, you know? The tension, the body tension is very much part of the, you know, sculptures there. You know? Then walking around the streets, you know, in, uh, in Delhi, you can uh, see a lot of matkas under the trees and you know, they are selling water or whatever, you know, so things are there, you know, big matkas are there available, you know. So I bought that matkas, big, big matkas into my studio, several of them. Then I just playing around with and then, you know, I, I put it together, this matka, you know, as I said earlier, you know, how my, I experimenting with them. Then I realized that uh, there is a space inside, you know, there is a closed, uh, what when it's closed, then there is a space inside. 
So it's something like a, a closed chest or a box or something. You know? there, is, there is a curiosity to know what, what is there inside. You know? The same way we have an inside. You know? We humans have, have an in, inner world. You know? So some association we can make out of. So I you know, started developing that you know, uh, inner, inner space. Then uh, I realized that this is uh, one of the quality of sculpture. This can be created only in sculpture. No other art forms you can you can create that inner inner body. You know. The painting you cannot actually, or any other cinema you cannot actually. So this is a, this is a property is specially for sculpture actually. So it's a basic sculpture. You know. I understood. Come to that. So this uh, again, the, 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 the Tirthankara, the, the figure is taking the breath. Then again, I, 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 know, I was you know, reflecting on my work, contemplating on my work. I, 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 I thought that uh, there, is, there is an element of you know, uh, putting together opposites basically uh, no, op opposite elements together actually you know, to resolve something but nothing resolving actually you know, because it's it's only problematizing uh, there is nothing i am resolving in that but it's a, it's in front of you it's just problem problematize this thing because it's you know when tirthankara is a very spiritual being uh, non representing non-violence and all, but then it's surrounded by these thoughts. So it's, it's, I am putting a question, you know, there, and instead of uh, an answering anything, you know, for that. It's a quite large work, I mean, a 20 feet wall, it's occupied, you know, sort of. 15 feet, you know, diameter, these thoughts are, you know, 14 thoughts are there, and 7 feet wide. This is again uh, uh, around six feet height on the wall. Sorry, this is it. So I this work is titled "It's a Tools." So these iron tools are there. It's also used by used to tools. You know, I collected and then uh, put around it. This again, 15 feet diameter circle, and uh, uh, the figure is also there. Because it is figure, actually, I I took from a, a, a temple bracket. You know, the devotees are there. You know, so and then I, I took that demo devotees and bring it into this uh, space, this structural space. So a sort of This was in 82, I think, uh, 92, 92, 92, so almost 30 years ago. This is also titled as Yellow Psalms, Manya Sangir Salangar. It's also a very, very uh, big work. I mean, it's a 20 feet wall, you know, shape. You know. This 
is mounted on the wall actually you know? so this is uh, this work is titled uh, far away from 108 feet i did in uh, delhi uh, when i was in delhi and uh, um, this is in buddha and park in delhi i think and uh, this is also in 90 uh, 90 90 94, 94, right? In 96, I returned to Kerala. Right? Uh, it's not in 97, actually, because 94 or 5, actually, because 96 already I, I returned to Kerala, Wandra. So I was not there. So that means it was 94, right? Yeah. So I, I, at that time, the thing is that, uh, um, you know, when this sculpture, uh, when I was doing, uh, one of the uh, discourses was the was with the the painting and sculpture with the narration and all of it. So for this sculpture, there is absolutely there. There is no story to tell. Actually, you know, there is nothing is there. Whatever is the, the objects and materials will speak. You know, it's it's indication to. This is a house of heavens. So I, I simultaneously I, I did a lot of uh, works on paper you know, because in while making sculptures, in between I have to do, do a lot of paperwork because, uh, you know, the sculptures are very difficult to sell, actually, you know. Nobody is here to buy, you know, in India, particularly the large scale sculptures, very difficult to sell. So you have to survive and you have to do create more work. Then uh, I started making you know, sketches. So that there are people, you know, willing to buy it because that they can Know, keep in their, you know, house or drawing room or whatever. It's so uh, that was the source of, uh, you know, uh, you know, generating income for creating sculpture. Right? The, uh, that's uh, that's the uh, reason I started working on paper and right? working with them. Then uh, slowly, you know, when uh, you know, there is a body of work and then it is shown, you know, right, it can, you know, withstand actually, you know, that is it. This school is very, uh, kind of personal reference is that I studied in this school, actually. This is my school, actually. <laughs> this, this kind of, uh, kind of you know, shrines you can see everywhere in, you know, Kerala, wherever you, you know, go in, inside the, you know, villages you, know, you can see, you know. You
these, these are also a uh, real thing. I mean, it's not uh, fic fictitious or I mean, imaginative thing. I mean, really, this kind of a shrine exists. Because I, uh, why I am saying is that uh, somebody was saying that uh, these are all uh, imaginary thing, you know, archetypal thing. There are, there are of course, archetypal things are there, but these are uh, really real things are there. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, yeah, it's starting like this. Yeah, near, near, nearby yeah, your house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, I felt that, uh, you know, because it's, uh, you know, you might have seen my drawings. For instance, the, the top portion is just torn off. I mean, it's not regular thing, you know. Uh, the reason is that uh, I want to, I want to show these drawings as an object, right? You know, it's an, it's an object and I'm, I'm showing that these drawings are objects, not just illusion, you know. So there you can see that, uh, uh, you know, when there is a, uh, there is a broken, uh, torn paper, you know, then you are uh, aware of the surface of the paper. It's like an object paper. So you, you are aware of the surface and then there is a perspective on it. So there is a tension between the surface and the, the illusion, uh, that the tension. Uh, in that tension, you know, you can put anything over it, uh, and then it hang on, hang, hang on in the, in the drawing. The same way the, the red patches there. You know, it can be a, a ritualistic, you know, kuridi or, you know, whatever, you know. The blood is there. You know, so that is, that comes to the very end of, I mean, the near edge of the drawing. You know. So this play between the perspective and the surface uh, uh, is very important to my work. But when you're looking at it, you may not aware of it. I'm aware of it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But here I, I think, uh, yeah, it's very cool, but it's actually the space, space actually, you know, for important to me, actually, space. So, so uh, the the trees is playing a kind of a, uh, you know breaking the space and then you know kind of tension between that you know in between you know when comes that house or in a church or whatever is coming uh, is there. You know. We, you know, in our uh, here in our place, we uh, the, actually the shrines you know, evolved from, you know, just you know when the farming community they you know started uh, you know a very small shrines when they were harvesting the rice and things like that, they just uh, light a lamp under a tree or something, you know, put a stone over there and then I just dump my dump there. Then later it become every year, you know, they improvise 
that structure, there will be a small shrine, then later there will be a, a, in a Devi, and then you know, it, it's transforming into something else. You know. This is the way most of these uh, you know, shrines, uh, even the Shabarimala shrine also evolved like that. You know. <laughs> so it's like that. And uh, we have a great poet, Kumar Nachan. So he used to write his poems in this, you know, his house, I mean, this, this house. <laughs> this is also real, it's not the <laughs> fiction. <laughs> really, it is still there. <laughs> Yeah, sorry? Uh, yeah, because I, I like to have a, a minimalist, uh, you know, uh, sensibility and I have. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to go on details, I guess. You go for details, then you know, I, I feel that you lose the, the, the substance, I mean, the content, actually. You, know. you go on, you know, Detailing, and then people looking at the details, and they they are unable to actually get into the you know the core. I mean the basic idea also. Oh, the I showed earlier. Actually, these are large canvas, you know, five feet by four. You know. This is another of my sculpture. Uh, it is called Speaking Stones. You see some photographs under the stone, you know. These are actually photographs of, uh, you know, communal writing, you know, from the partition onwards, you know. So almost 40 of them are there. I mean, the, the, the Gandhi's death and assassination and all. Those kind of images came in the newspapers and magazines. So I copied it and then I, you know, printed it. Yeah, I, I choose that photograph, yeah. Selected means uh, they are in my, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't, actually I am not, I don't want to, sh to show the photograph. I mean, I'm not, my intention is to, know, to, to not showing the photographs, but the photographs is a fact and it is there, I know. So when you put a stone on top of it, it, it's not very visible there, actually, you know. But that, that reality is there, you know. Only that extent I am interested in. So I did work on stone as well, I mean granite, I mean sort of. So once Central Academy invited me for a workshop camp in Hyderabad, I did this sculpture there. Hmm? Ah, stones, okay, sand stones. Hello. Wow.
using Spencer Press, you know, um, when someone asked you a question regarding the retail, and you said you don't get into the retail to have, um, have more of a meaningful perspective, but one cannot stop noticing, um, I mean, from a lay person's point of view, when you look at it, you have this fascination for the stars, uh, and, and the stars are not minimal, minimalistic, almost like you're exaggerating the amount of stars than you, than you actually can see. So what, what prompts you to constantly bring back that one of my questions, and secondly, uh, what is your inspiration for using a certain kind of a color, because that's also a pattern one can see, that in some, you choose to highlight a certain thing, you know, sometimes in yellow, sometimes in blue, sometimes in orange, so what prompts you to use those uh, colors, that whole idea? See, in my drawing and my even sculpture, I, 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 I was actually, uh, you see, uh, fascinated with an idea of, you know, poetic, you know, images, I mean, so how poetic means it's not very definite, I mean, it's not because it's con contemplative, I mean, it's, it's not resolved anything else. But in the same time, uh, how it can be achieved, I mean, I was uh, searching for that and then I happened to read some, you know, some writings on Martin Heidegger and all the sort of. I'm not a philosopher or, I mean, I'm not in that kind of thing, but I got into that and he was actually talking about a, a, a fourfold of the world. I mean, a fourfold of the world means he was, he was a linguist also, so he uh, written on linguistics. I don't know. So he was, uh, he was explaining that, uh, you know, when you look at any language, there is uh, references to uh, gods or divine things, and then there is references to earth, and then there is references to mortals. So uh, basically, these are the things I you know. So and then he is saying that you know once you uh, you know put a, a opposite thing into uh, something, I mean something. For instance, the uh, heavens into earth or uh, uh, mortals into divine, then immediately uh, the language got into a, a, a circle. A circle, in it completes the thing. And it's detached from the utilitarian meaning and it's, 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 it's stand out. I mean, it's, it goes to a, a very poetic uh, thing. I mean, the oldness, it reveals its oldness, reveals its meaning. That is what he was explaining. So, Many of my drawings, you can see that the stars are there, and, and then it is, you know, when it is in the twilight of the, the day, there is a light, uh, the day or night, you know, when both these things come together, so there is a darkness is there. You know. Then, uh, and the stars are reflecting on the pond. So there is a lingering thing, you know, the, the earth is, you know, reaching to the sky, you know. So you, you experience a, a cosmic thing or you know, something. You know. So these are not, I mean, I mean, visually it's not, but when you're looking at, you know, our language is like, so like that, our images are like that. So it's, it's touching to you, you know, so, I mean, uh, so that kind of thing I am interested in. I'm not interested in uh, the, uh, poem, I mean, giving it a detailed, I mean, you know, how a pond looks like or something like that. So the, the the round also the circular thing, you know, circular thing also one can interpret in a very le different levels. I mean, you know, because it's a mandala, it's a protective ring. So once you see something like that, you feel more comfortable there, you know, because it is space like that, you know. If you are standing on a, a stadium on an open space, you will be very vulnerable. You know. So if you are come to a corner, you will be more protected there. You know. So each space has their, you know, uh, meaning, you know. Uh, so I am looking for these spaces, you know. That's what I was saying that I'm interested in this, this space, actually, you know. So how to, you know, spend something like that. That is the reason I am, I said that I am interested in details. In, but instead of, I am interested in the space, actually, you know. That space in a, in a very symbolic way, because 
in any way, in cultural uh, uh, things, we express through symbols actually. You know. Otherwise, we cannot actually do it, things like that. Okay. Okay. This again, uh, you know, uh, this is called the fence. The tree, you know, uh, uh, I built a fence with the, uh, you know, real arch, you know, just like that. Yeah. This is in, uh, I think, uh, 97 or something like that. 97, uh, yeah. It's a very huge, you know, 25 feet diameter, you know, the circle is there. You know, so. I had a very difficult time, actually, you know. People trying to see, I mean, <laughs> what is actually here, real act. <laughs> it's a dan dancer with the four arms, is the title of this one. I, I had a show uh, in New York with uh, uh, Bodhi Gallery. Now, the Bodhi Gallery is no, no longer there, but I had a show there, and uh, these works are from that show. These are quite huge work, I mean, it's not very small, you know. Because uh, usually, you know, sculptures are very frontal, you know, when you see something like that. So I, I was uh, you know, trying to make it, you know, uh, the, the spatial you know, thing, you know, exploring that thing. You know, when you go around the sculpture, you know, you have different, different, different uh, angle, you know, you, you see. So you have a different experience, actually, you know, sort of thing. This is the female body is bronze, the other thing is fiberglass. These are also bronze sculptures. No, no, not at all. No, not, uh, I mean, I, I'm not, uh, I mean, consciously I'm not, uh, you know, into uh, creating any Indian things or anything, because I frankly tell you that, I mean, maybe in our senior generation, uh, they were uh, involved in, I mean, their preoccupation was the creating an Indian, Indian flavored art, an Indian art, an Indian modern art or something like that. So in, I think in my generation, people uh, are trying to keep away from that kind of uh, an idea. Because, because, because uh, uh, for us actually, 
the more important thing is to uh, understand the life around you and uh, the political, cultural, and uh, the other various things that is happening around you and reflecting such things on your work. You know. That is more important than creating something, you know, Indian, you know, Indian aesthetics or Indian uh, things or anything like that. So that is that is a paradigm shift actually from you know my our earlier generation to our generation. But then uh, you may ask uh, my works uh, have uh, reference to the traditional art and all. Uh, uh, these things I just uh, uh, decontextualizing actually. You know, as I said earlier, you know when you look at a devotee on the temple bracket, that is something else, and I removed uh, you know that thing from there and you know, putting it into a different context. So it is something else actually, you know. So totally, you know, deconstructing what was there, you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Hey. Yes, I mean, I'm <laughs> most welcome. I mean, you can ask questions. I mean, I mean, there is no no problem because my answer is not. I mean, it's not pre-planned or anything. I mean, so whatever I feel instantly, I, I, I you know, responding to your questions. That's all. I mean, so uh, I mean, it's something like that. I don't, I don't mind. I mean, that's good. I mean, when you are looking at things and immediately you are asking, then that is a, a direct. In a response, you know? so uh, that's all right. I mean, it's I mean good actually. You know, that's all right. Yeah. Okay, this is my one of my uh, the most recent. I mean, a solo show I held. I mean, just just before the corona and our COVID nineteen. Now, it was in Delhi. So after that, I, I haven't had any solo show there. You know? So this is it. This is from the gallery, you know, how it was being you know, exhibited there. So I did some you know, work on paper on the round shaking. I am not uh, reflecting on, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, sort of, uh, uh, you know, or protesting against the socio-political situation or anything. But my work, uh, I mean, uh, you can you can see or um, I see it like the, uh, it it is a it is a counter culture. I, mean, I am I am creating an art that uh, that belongs to a, a not the mainstream thing, but something. An alternative thing, an alternative art. So, so that is the reason this kind of figures are you know, coming. You know. So it's an alternative art, I mean, or a, a counter art, actually. You know. So that's my political you know, <laughs> stand, actually. Yeah, you see, I mean, this uh, when I, uh, you know, that circle is 
carved out from the floor. This is a negative space this here. This is a floor actually. We are seeing the floor. Sir, so may huh? I ask a question? Okay, sir. Yeah, I wanted to follow up on some of the question here. Like he asked uh, about asking you about the artwork. Uh -huh. Sometimes when we see artwork around, we're not able to meet the artist and hear him talk about all his practices, talk about how, you know, you what was the thought process. So when we are seeing art somewhere around us, yeah. what questions can we ask ourselves so that we can uh, have a good, uh, you know, we can c interact with the art more meaningfully. How can yeah. I learn from seeing this artwork without asking you, but asking myself, what can I do that? How can I, uh, you know, interact with it? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's a good thing. I mean, you know, uh, uh, the thing is that uh, that's the reason they are, you know, uh, having this kind of a, you know, interactive section actually, you know, showing my work and then I'm here and you can ask any question, any kind of thing, you know, I have a response, I mean, it can be negative or it can be positive, I, know, I understand that, you know, so it's like that and then I can also learn a lot, I mean, how you uh, responding, I mean, how you seeing it, you know, so it's uh, both ways, uh, given and taken, you know. So uh, it's interesting, I mean, isn't it? <laughs> okay. You started by presenting your doodles, and then uh, you went on to talk about alternative realities. So how do you negotiate between something that comes spontaneously and something that you're thinking consciously while making your art? So. Hmm, okay. Yeah, there is no, 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 nothing, there is no contradiction of anything because, you know, you are uh, uh, giving a lot of inputs, you know, where, while you are working and you know, doing things. You, know. you just, uh, it's a process, you just evolving something, you know. Because it's called, for instance, I tell you an example, you know, when I was doing the man in chalk circle, you know, uh, that part, I did that figure at first. So it they take a long time to do, you know, when I was very young and, you know, I, I was not very, not very technically perfect at that time. You know? So I did that work and I did cast in fiberglass and all and uh, painted it with oil color and all. There, there. So I was disappointed with uh, that work because uh, it, it, it almost looks like a beggar sitting on the floor, you know. So that's not my idea about and uh, that's not, I'm not uh, doing that kind of thing. Uh, I'm, uh, so I'm totally disappointed. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I know that uh, it's not much what my my intention to do that kind of thing. So and every day I come to my studio. I mean, uh, I was trying. I was doing my other work and watching it, keeping watching it and going. I, I don't know how to solve it problem. So keep keep on that and and uh, for a couple of months later. I, I, I tried many things, you know. I added many objects and things like that, and but it, it not it did not work. So one day I just put a circle on it. So immediately it's 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 elevated to something else. So that gives you a very happiness, you know. So that that very kind of thing, you know. So this is the this way actually, you know. You are discovering some meaning. You know. That meaning may be within you within your mind or deep inside. So you have to actually discover it. The same way that, you know, I, I said that, that uh, you know, when I did in the sculpture in the Royal College of Art, you know. So when I went there, they gave me a space, an empty space. So you do whatever you want to do. 
I, I have nothing to, I mean, they, they, I just pick up some planks from the skip and made a frame and I just started making a couple there. And so it's very, uh, very common, very conventional kind of a relief work is there. So that's not what my intense means. You know. So I was struggling with, you know, I did many things. I mean, I put a cross over it. I put some big stone over it. So all these things I did, but it's not, it's not coming to my, you know, my meaning. You know, so, so then I find that bumper, you know, automobile bumper somewhere, and I, 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 so my idea was to make a rainbow because it's a romantic scene. So I thought, put a rainbow over it. You know. So I put a rainbow, but that it's not, it doesn't work. So I put it the other way around. So it, it worked. Then I completed that circle uh, with the charcoal on the wall. So uh, I find that uh, it's, it's amazing because that uh, it circle, uh, e even though it is an illusion, but it gives a solid thing and then that, uh, that uh, solid thing, uh, that gravity is going to the figure. So the figure is again uh, charged with uh, some energy, new energy. So it's like that. So each, each and every work, you have to uh, go through this struggle actually, you know. The major work, I mean, the other work, okay, you will just uh, continuing something as well. Uh, the paintings also is like something like that, I know. So that, that much of struggle is there, that, that much of mind you are you know, putting into it to transform that uh, paper into uh, an, a, a sense of meaning, you know, just like that. Mm -hmm. This work is titled Blood Rain. No. See, now uh, in uh, Kerala, is, uh, is a, it's a phenomenon is that uh, the, the political rivalry and uh, the kind of, you know, we call it our uh, kind of democracy and all, but, you know, uh, there is a you know, uh, the, the minus tolerance is there. You know, so, so, in terms of ideas, they kill each other. You know. More than 300 people were, I mean, died, I mean, killed by, you know, rivals. Ah, killed by, you know, the rivalry, particularly in the northern part of Kerala, you know. So, I, I took this, uh, you know, photographs of this, you know, victims or, uh, uh, but the photographs are blurred, but it, and I did not show uh, details of that, you know. In the So, I I have a question about I I have a question about the blood rain. Mm. Um, I I just wanted to know what the significance of the mat, the matkas that the, you used yeah. uh, um, and inverted them. So I wanted to know uh, what that meant. The only thing the matka I mean the inner inner world. I mean I was in the beginning I was talking about that you know the. Uh, it, it represents the, the self or the inner uh, hmm. aspect of the, uh, you know, human or whatever. I mean, so, yeah. so that that represents the uh, that unknown, some uh, something uh, something beyond our you know perception is there. You know. okay. So, so then you know, one thing is that the sculptures and uh, the art, you, you just cannot actually. Uh, pinpoint that this particular image is representing this or, you know, there is no definite thing is there, but 
it is it, it's it's more ambiguous i mean ambiguous means not it's not uh, there is a, a confusion or anything but only it, it it is it's based on feeling and experience so once you ha when you're looking at that port over there it kind of uh, uh, and, uh, these uh, bottom part and the top part you know when put together to create a, a sense of meaning you know yeah. that, uh, so that level you have to take it and otherwise it will be very difficult actually you know each and every image you cannot actually you know talk about that you know one even if if i say something on that hmm. this is that then uh, it will be sealed uh, the fate of that sculpture because the, then you always feel that so oh, this is what what uh, all about that sculpture so you cannot actually go beyond that so yeah. I also always feel that uh, I am reluctant to talk about my sculptures, actually, because this is the reason, actually, you know. Okay. Once I say something, yeah. uh, it will be, uh, then, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. people always perceive like that, you know. For instance, my speaking stone, many people uh, return on that. So they all talk about this, this all communal writing and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. You know. But one can read many other things, other meanings in it. So that possibility is actually we are blocking, you know. <laughs> Once you yeah. say that yeah. this is what all about that, you know. Anyway, yes. This also we uh, show. The big ma is the sculpture. The next one. So we're looking at some of the more recent exhibitions, no? If anyone has any more questions? You have. You have to hold. Maybe one more. One more. Yeah. No, no. On one more only. One more set of. Hi, uh, good evening. <coughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah. So I am actually looking into, so I am studying design education. Huh. So in that I am trying to look into art as a practice where it has always been a debate between art and design. So if I have to pose a question where I have been going like, the presentation where I was seeing the drawings, I was seeing the sketches, the paintings, the sculpture, it had a meaning mm -hmm. and a language and tones that can be read, mm. which can be felt by you. So if ever that these paintings are kept, there is no literature with it and it, it's just pure paintings and pure sculpture. Do you think that it, it would reach with the same intensity without the words like like if no words and just visuals. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I think uh, you know um, and there are there is differences, but uh, uh, th these are visual art, and uh, uh, I must say that uh, without any uh, text or literature, uh, one can get into it because the thing is that uh, it's a language actually language of uh, visual art you know? so each of us actually uh, gone through uh, kind of experiences uh, for instance uh, uh, i am talking about a certain uh, any region in, like in, in particularly in our uh, south asia so there is certain uh, kind of uh, uh, cultural experience we have so we have a, a, a receptive to colors, certain colors. For instance, red or yellow or blue, or, and we like to have uh, you know that kind of colors, and we experience that, you know, that kind of thing. This is not the way actually Europeans uh, experience the color. 
So this is so the uh, that is the reason I, I said earlier, you know, because it's 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 symbol it's symbolically it, it, it expresses the the meaning actually, you know. So uh, the cultural things are you know operating on that level in politics also there. So we understand that meaning. So once uh, once uh, uh, an artist creating something. Then uh, naturally the the audience, the people who also come from that particular uh, understanding, they can understand it without any literature or anything. They, they, maybe they are not able to explain it, or, you know, what it is, what they feel or anything. That is uh, uh, one's ability to articulate how how it is. You know. So otherwise, one one seeing it, that image hits you on the soul. I mean, so you experience it. The first thing is that, and then um, once you experience that thing, and then you think about uh, how, what what was that, what experience it creates, what mechanism it creates, uh, where, whether it is in me or whether it is that work of art, which are the elements actually generated that feeling. You know, all these things you write it down. Then it is a text actually. So, so the many people in, uh, doing it, then there is a discussion on it. Then we are expanding it on it and that images. And then we keep writing on publishing books on articles on. Then it become very much part of the you know uh, culture. So we we understand it. It is it will be, it will become very much part of our life. Become central to our life and. It's, it's sustainability uh, of uh, you know our life, so that is the meaning of art. Actually, that is the purpose of art. Actually, uh, if there have to be just keywords to explain the art that you have been engaging into, and those keywords for self, what would they be? Sorry, keywords for your own self to explain art, what would they be? Like just. If, if they have to be in form of words, any plural word, like do you find art as a form of plural expression or it being gendered to one thing or it being restricted to one art form or coming from one roots? No, 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 it's not coming from one root. I mean, it's a multi, you know, uh, disciplinary actually. I mean, so we see uh, artists uh, see a lot of things. I mean, so you know, we travel a lot and you know, read a lot and interacting with the people and uh, so many cultural things, cultural. Uh, I mean, many many things are there and these are all have an impact on it. I mean, it's so uh, only you know when you are doing the work, it comes out from your inner inner self. Otherwise, you cannot pinpoint what it is or anything. So one, once it is on the canvas or one, it, one, once it is on the gallery and you know, images is there, there you can, one can say that oh, maybe its roots are from there. I, mean, I don't think that this this is too much actually. You know, we, we don't we don't want to show eh? that New York thing. Can you? S yeah. Okay. It's, it's a PDF. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is only this is only two two works, so we can wind up, you know, with that. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, we, 
Anyway, okay, what I'm asking you is to remove that uh, Yeah, it's the, it's the app is not full screen it. That's the maximum. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. This is a very small show. I mean, there are very few works there in that my solo show in New York. Uh, the show is titled. Uh, I thank you once again. That was the title of that show. Next. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, anyway. Back to uh, what I was. Ah, what I was. Uh, <laughs> created is that I go around and collected very small, uh, you know, uh, silver objects, which was actually part of, uh, you know, a local people's belief that, you know, when they have got some you know, illness of their stomach or their pets or something, then they pray for that and then they just, uh, you know, deposit that silver thing into the temples or churches or something like that. So I collected many of them and then I uh, remodeled it. And, you know, this is the thing. This my These are in bronze. You know. These images are already existing images, but it's very small, two centimeter kind of very tiny silver images, you know. So, so I blow it up on that. One piece. These are uh, something like uh, uh, two feet, something like bronze. Yeah. This is all smaller than uh, one feet. Yeah. Hmm? 
Yeah, I have this, um, these works are actually not for understanding or anything, you know. So my, in, uh, my interest in art is to, to it, sh it should be, uh, it should be experienced actually, you know, not to understand it, you know. So if somebody is going to understand, trying to understand it, then uh, he may not going to feel it, I mean, I experience it. So uh, I, I always, you know, feel that you know, people should uh, should experience it. Then, if they feel you know they want to understand it or think about it or whatever, I mean, that's the second thing, you know, second process actually, you know, to understanding it. So that depending on you know how one is one want to uh, whatever one want to understand it or not, I mean, depending. On, I don't bother about it. So understanding is also is is hierarchical. I mean, in the sense. Person to person, you know, it's depending. I mean, you know, on, you know, how we're going to understand it. So I think that's a, I think that's a misconception actually. Work of art, we have to to feel it and feel, experience it. For instance, I I I, I feel some some of the classical music, even the Carnatic music or in Hindustani music. I don't know. Uh, maybe I am not very well versed in that, you know, text or anything, you know. But I enjoy it. So uh, maybe uh, if I understand that uh, text, it will be more interesting. That's a different thing. The same way uh, Hindi music, uh, I like it, but I am not fully understand it. Actually. What what was it? What, what was and the li lyrics? I don't understand it. Actually. So Telugu music or Tamil music or something. You know? We enjoy it, isn't it? That's what it. Any other questions? Anybody? I think we're coming to the close of oh, yeah. almost. Anybody? Oh, okay. okay, thank you for you know, <laughs> coming here and uh, <laughs> listening to me. <laughs> thank you very much for that.
Thank you, sir. Jinjin, sir, thank you for coming down here. Uh, Jinjin, sir, was visiting Cochin, and then he said, please come join us at the museum. Let's take a look at Reggie's work and um, also speak about uh, Jinjin, sir's practice. Uh, I hope it was enlightening, exciting, yeah. Um, uh, we're not really uh, thinking of how to decipher a painting, um, but for you all, it's uh, language of communication, since you all are, um, and so it was important for you all also to interact with uh, Jinjin sir. Um, you can probably go look at more of his work, which is available um, online, pictures are there, you can actually see more of his work now that you have had a taste of what it's about. Um, the show is organized um, by the Guild Art Gallery and the Kerala Museum. And it's part of uh, Reggie's show that's in the Kerala Museum. I don't know how many of you all have visited the um, show in there. Uh, Reggie's artwork is on display till the, till the 5th of April. Um, and uh, although they're not exactly contemporaries, are you? <laughs> Junior to Rinzin, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, but both are Kerala artists. Uh, I, for you all who just looked at the symbolism in Reggie's work, also, um, the school and the uh, student plays a major role in the paintings, uh, which is also uh, evident here. In, uh, and Reggie's is full of details, and Rinzin sir's is symbolic, zoomed out kind of view that we had. Uh, so thank you, Rinzin sir, for spending so much time with us and also making yourself quite vulnerable to a lot of questions <laughs> regarding sculptures. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir.